<laughs> Maybe it will. You guys tell me. Are we stupid or are we not? Let's get right into this, shall we? Welcome back this week to the Scrumptious Sandwich Show. My name is Andrew Brown, and today I will be delivering you another culinary expedition. If this is your first time visiting the channel, do not forget to go under and like and subscribe to the channel. Click that notification bell so that you'll know whenever new episodes come. They will be going weekly for the first season, but still, it's just an easy reminder. You don't have to think about it. Just click it. Just click that notification, click that subscribe button. Don't forget to check out all of our sponsors' links that are also in the description today. And we're gonna get right into making this delicious sandwich, which I know I am gonna biff the name of, a croque monsieur. Now this is a French creation, and it comes from the words croque, which means to crunch or crunchy, and monsieur, which is mister. So it's Mr. Crunchy is what we're going with. Actually, it was my nickname back in high school. For those who know, you know. Um, but this was created around the early 1900s in France. It started appearing on different menus around the time. Proust actually wrote about it in one of his books. And that was the first literary reference to this delicious, delicious Parisian treat. It is often very commonly found in bars, in different restaurants and dives, places that you need a quick snack at. And it is also an incredible hangover food. So if you're ever wanting to make a quick sandwich in the morning to bring you back after a hard night, this, this one is the one here for you. There are also about a thousand different variations on this sandwich, but I'm gonna be going with the most basic and normal one. If you guys wanna see me create any of those other ones, you know where to put it. Go down into the comments, tell me which ones you wanna see. I've got plenty of time and I wanna make them all for you, but today, let's get into this one right now. All right, now, first thing that we're gonna to do today is we're gonna grate this here cheese. This is some fine cave-aged Gruyere freight straight from Switzerland. Got it fresh off the plane today. That's a lie, but this is still really good cheese. I've got a good guy. Make sure you find a good cheese guy. What you're just gonna do is take it and run it along your delicious box grater to get it nice and good and shredded up. This is another one of my personal favorite kitchen utensils. I understand why some people don't like it because grating can be repetitive and a hassle, but I find it very, very relaxing, very nice. And this is all hinged on getting good shredded cheese and you will see why when we get to that preparation phase. You just wanna make sure you take a whole block at least because it's gonna be necessary. All right, now we got a good amount of shredded cheese here. I'm just gonna take it, put it right into this. Fun little fact, since we wanna keep this cheese shredded because we're gonna have to do some sprinkling kind of applications. Something good is to take a little bit of flour, just throw it right on in there. Mix it in with the cheese. It'll keep it from clumping up and it'll keep your shredded cheese separate. So if you want those good shreddy bits for any recipe you use, but for this one specifically, it is super crucial. All right, bam, now that's done. All right, now that we got our cheese shredded, I am gonna take some time and cut up our ham for today. And if you can take a look at this beautiful, beautiful, all natural, pre-smoked ham that we got from pasture to plate, you know where it is, right down there. Check it out, pasturetoplate.ca. If you're in British Columbia, you know what it is. But let's get right back to it. I'm just gonna cut this ham right down the middle in half. And then, oh, oh. All right, we'll be taking it now and just slicing it slightly thick, but not too thick. Thick enough to be the main piece of your sandwich. This guy came a little bit extra fatty, but that's actually part of the whole process. If you feed them like how they're supposed to be fed properly, pigs are gonna have fat on them. It's just part of the whole thing. But depending on what type of thing you're cooking, you might wanna cut some of them off. I'm gonna cut this little cap off so we don't burn anything. All right, but now we've got some good, delicious sliced ham. Time to move on to the next part, making our bechamel sauce. All right, now I'm gonna try my hardest not to eat all of this ham while I prepare the rest of our stuff. First thing that we're gonna do is cut this bread. This is a nice brioche bun, you can use that. 
It's a good French bread, but any kind of rustic bread will do. A sourdough, anything like that is perfect for this sandwich. So what I'm gonna do is just cut this right down the middle, take the two halves, throw them into the toaster, and begin to lightly toast those buns. Now, next part I'm gonna do is move on to making the bechamel sauce, which is a white sauce in France. It's actually one of the original mother sauces, so you know this has some history. And though this is my first time, I think I'm gonna kill it. So let's get right into it. First, you're gonna wanna take a nice little saucepan, anything you've got like that, put it right on your burner, and turn it up to a little bit below medium. And then you're gonna take your milk. I've got two cups here. Pour it right on in. Make sure you don't spill the milk like I did. But you also wanna make sure, and this is very, very crucial, that you do not burn the milk. Milk is very susceptible to burning. You wanna heat it up and warm it up, but you do not want it to boil or it will burn. And that will be a problem. So just make sure you keep an eye on it. Just leave it on the heat for a little bit. Get it nice and nice and comfortable. Mix it around. You wanna constantly, constantly keep mixing it because if you do leave it sit for any amount of second, it is going to burn. And also don't turn your burner up too high. That'll do a long, that'll go a long way to help you. As you can see, you got it good and mixed up in here. Just getting it, making sure. All right, now once you got a few little bubbles running in there and it looks like it's pretty well heated up, you can take your milk, pull it off the burner, take a regular non-stick frying pan, throw that right back on the burner that you were just on, and turn it up just a smidge, not too much, but enough. And you'll take some good old fashioned butter. Mm, butter, who doesn't love butter? You wanna put in about two tablespoons worth, or you know, a good little dolloping right off the end. And while that butter begins to melt, you're also gonna wanna take flour. This one's jumbo stuff, you can see it right now, so I'm gonna do about one and a half, but you'd want about a tablespoon for the amount of butter that you've got. So those will go up. I also probably should say, these recipes are probably larger than what you would cook necessarily at home for yourself. But that is because, again, I'm cooking for my whole crew. So I feed everyone. Because they aren't eating, I'm not eating. That's right, that's right. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Rain it all down on me, rain it all down. So you wanna make sure, once you get the butter in and it starts melting, you start whisking it together in the pan so that it'll start to melt. I think I might need a little bit more butter, but that's okay. Just wanna get it back to temperature. Let that melt it out a little bit. All right, now, take two. I'm gonna try this bechamel sauce again. First, you wanna get your butter in the pan. You wanna make sure it gets good and melted first. I think that was my mistake the first time around. We got a little clumpy there, and it wasn't turning out great. So, mix the butter around a little bit. Make sure it's good and melted. And then, I'm gonna take your flour, start incorporating that into there. And make sure you whisk it very, very well. Yeah, there we go. All right, so now you can see we got a much better consistency in the pan there. And then, what you're gonna wanna do is take your milk and start to slowly incorporate it in as well. Mix it around. Make sure it's not too hot so again, you don't burn your milk. You just wanna slowly start to incorporate it into the pan. Mix all these guys around. Make sure everyone starts getting friendly with each other. It gets good to know. Sometimes you can take a break for a minute. Make sure, again, everyone gets good and familiar. Again, you just don't want it to burn. That is absolutely the last thing you want. Let's see, mm, it starts, there we go. Now it starts to smoothen out. See how the texture changes. This bin begin to incorporate within into each other. Just wanna keep on whisking it until you get that desired consistency. All right, now, as you can see, 
After making a whole mess around my area and calling some audibles, we've now got the bechamel sauce more of where we want it to be. You want it to be nice and thick and smooth like this. Not as watery as I had it before. And I realize you also don't need it to be on the heat. You want to take it off the heat once you start mixing it together and all of that. So now that we've got our sauce made, I'm gonna put that off to the side. And now that my bread is finishing up, we wanna get into the preparation phase here and start really making this sandwich so we can get it going. All right, back again one more time for again, my favorite part of the sandwich process, the assembly process. We're gonna give you a new view on this extremely intimate and delicious experience. So what you're gonna wanna take is your good brioche bun. And look at that, by the way. These things straddle the line between pastry and bread so well. It's incredible. You're gonna wanna take that, throw that right down on there. You know what, this thing's got a spout on it. I'm just gonna put some of that mustard right on there. Make sure you spread it around. Get it nice and evenly coated on the bottom of your bread there. Take a slice or two, you know, we'll throw two on these, of your delicious, beautiful ham. And then you're just gonna wanna take some of your cheese here, sprinkle it right on top. Make sure you got a good little amount right in there. Not too much, cause you don't want it to get too crazy, but a good enough amount. And then, here's where things really get wild. Watch and learn. You're gonna take a spoon, you're gonna take your bechamel sauce, you're gonna drizzle it right over the top of your bread. Spread it right on there. Get a nice, good coating of it right on top of that bread. And then the final piece de resistance. You're gonna take some more cheese, sprinkle that right on top of that bad boy. And then you're gonna take it, you're gonna throw it in the oven at 375 for two to three minutes. And then you're gonna kick it up to broil for the last 30 seconds. And it's gonna be completely, perfectly delicious and crispy. I'll check you back here in a minute after I do that for the final presentation. All right, now the final reveal. We have but a few more seconds left. Check my timer here before. Oh, time's up. So it's ready to pull. I gotta say, I'm impressed with this for my first time. This looks pretty delicious. So without further ado, I'm gonna cut right into here. Oh, you getting that on the mic? That's what you want, that good, crunchy sound. Let's get that cross section, shall we? Ooh. You know what would be the perfect thing for this? A Destiny IPA. So IPAs actually go really well with Croque Monsieur's. I didn't know that before, but today's your lucky day, and now you know too. Shout out to Fuggles and Warlock, again, one of the best breweries in all of British Columbia. They've got some good, good products, good quality stuff, and they got a great name, a great atmosphere. You should check them out whenever you get the chance. If you're in Richmond, or if you're in British Columbia for every reason, they're worth it, times a million. Oh, that's so good. Now we're gonna get into the even better part. That's a lie, I don't know if it can match up, but That's illegal. Like that shouldn't, I shouldn't be allowed to do this. Who let me do this? That was delicious. I am so happy I got to do this. I'm gonna absolutely destroy this. So I'll see you guys next time. But before you go, do not forget to like this video. Go down underneath it, subscribe, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you know when the next time it is. If you think I did anything stupid here, if you got any suggestions, let me know down in the comments below as well. Or if you got support, let me know that too. Let me know anything. Just don't forget, like, subscribe, and comment, and we'll see you next week. Stay scrumptious, y'all.